All right, well, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. No problem. So um, I guess the day you were introduced as head coach of the Carlton Ravens, you said it was a dream come true. You've now been living that dream for, for over a year. Has it been everything you expected? And more. It really has been. I, it, the opportunity to come in and, and start from the ground floor, it's, uh, it's an incredible experience. It, it's, uh, it's one that, uh, you know, I don't know if very few of any coaches uh, in Ontario have had that opportunity. And I know a couple of guys in Quebec have had that opportunity, but it, it truly is a, a special time. After getting let go by St. Mary's, somewhere where you had a lot of success, uh, your hometown team, did you come here to Carleton with a chip on your shoulder? For sure. You know, I think I have something to prove, and I'm going to make sure that uh, it, in some ways that uh, they regret their decision, and uh, I think that's a little bit of human nature. But uh, the reality is uh, I'm a competitive guy, and I want us to do well here and very well. Okay, so you get here to Carleton, like, when you're starting a football program from scratch, where do you even start? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I can tell you the first month was a blur last year of, uh, you know, I had people calling me saying, you should recruit this guy and that guy. I had other people talking about, you know, what are you going to do with your budget? And we got planning and, and you know, it was a whirlwind. Uh, sort of as after the first 30 days have gone by and, and once we got our first hire in place with JP, things have sort of became more of a, a routine and you know obviously the coaching staff is building and, and things are settling in a lot better. You mentioned the coaching staff. I have to ask about the Ottawa U connection. Three of your coaches, JP, Chris Coulson and Josh Zacoby, came here from the University of Ottawa GG's football program. That can't be a coincidence. <laughs> well it, it started with the JP thing and, and you know I think JP was looking obviously for a change and and the opportunity to do the two things he liked, coaching and recruiting. And, you know, this program provided him that. Uh, obviously, you always want to have people that you, uh, that you work well with. And him and Chris Colson obviously were good buddies. And, and it just unfolded that, uh, well, you created another position that Josh fit in. And, uh, you know, obviously the connection there. Uh, and those guys have a really good synergy within, the, within this office. And they work well together. Uh, they have in the past and, and probably will together. I'm going to push you a bit more on that one. Um, <laughs> the theory out there, and I mean, I'm sure you've heard it, is that you, know, you hired these guys, of course, because they're going to help your football program, yeah. but also because they're going to help, by getting them, it's going to help set back the program over at Ottawa U. How would you respond to those theories? Well, my response is pretty simple. I, honestly, Ottawa U in the city creates uh, an unprecedented rivalry within the CIS. I think, you know, with the Panda games in the past and that, uh, I didn't come here to stir the pot. <laughs> I, if it did, great. But uh, I want to get the best people. And, and I honestly, truly believe JP was the best guy. And uh, when he approached me, uh, it, to me, it was a no-brainer. Okay, so enough about the coaching staff. Well, let's talk some football. Okay. Um, one of your first moves as head coach was securing a commitment from quarterback Jesse Mills, uh, someone who played for you at St. Mary's, someone you're very familiar with. At the time, you said he'll likely be the face of this program. Now you have another kid here, Nick Gorgachuk, a local guy who dominated the QJFL and the OV OVFL this past season. Now I know we're still six months away, but who do you see leading that huddle on September 2nd? Well, I think one of the neat things about it, and I both, it, it, just as, a, as an idea, I sat down with both Jesse and Nick and said, you know, the way this program will be driven is by you two. And uh, who's ever starting, the other guy needs to push and want to be the starter. And the guy who's not starting needs to support the starter. Uh, I think that's a huge important point. Uh, one guy made a point to me years ago and he said, you know, I think the most important position on your team is your backup quarterback. You know, is it the Tom Brady or is it who backs up Tom Brady? And in that instance, you know, we felt it was very important that we get strong in the middle there. And uh, who's going to start? Uh, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's an open competition, and I want those two to, to battle hard. And, and obviously we brought in a third guy in Tyler Callahan, um, who's an exceptional athlete, and uh, I, I think he's going to surprise people. Okay, so by my count, 10 of your recruits played their high school football in London, Ontario. Mm -hmm. Is that an area you specifically targeted from day one with your coaching staff, or maybe is that an area where your message just seems to be resonating most? I think it's the latter. I, <clears throat> my past experience of recruiting in London has been 
poor at best. <laughs> I talked to Ryan, uh, who came from Queens, poor at best. JP, poor at best. So it's not like we had uh, any great, uh, you know, inroads. But I think guys were very intrigued by the message. You know, uh, the comparison of using the playing in their hometown with Western. Western has one of the best traditions in this country in football. Um, Carlton right now has no tradition, and. Uh, we found guys that especially a Nate Bahar who was uh, a trailblazer. He wanted to set the tone of a program. He could have went to Western and been, you know, in line with all the other, you know, fabulous receivers they've had over the years and so on. But, uh, and I think that's, uh, once he got on board, I think more people really were, wow, this is a, a, an incredible opportunity. Let's talk a bit more about Nate Bahar. We'd, we'd be remiss not to. Um, just tell us about what kind of player he is and what kind of person he is and I guess just what went through your mind when you found out he was going to join your program. <laughs> uh, well, I must say we, uh, we joked around in the office because I told everybody we were going to get him. <laughs> and of course, everyone laughed because we didn't really have that, uh, that inroads with, uh, uh, with the London area. But, you know, we, we talked to him, we brought him in, he had a great visit. Uh, and the, the characteristics I liked, he's a leader right out of the gate you know uh, he wants to be a captain he, he wants to be a leader it, you know he has a dynamic personality that people will follow and uh, that was very important for us right out of the gate as a player uh, you know we uh, you know I've watched him play probably five or six times over the since the summer and through his season and you know his ability to make plays is second to none and he's one of the most dynamic players that I've coached for sure uh, you know, and he's only coming into his freshman year. Uh, I think by his fourth year, he's going to be something special. So London, as we know, is Western Mustangs territory. You mentioned it. And I'm sure you've bumped into their coaching staff a few times over the last mm -hmm. year or so. Just what have those conversations been like? Uh, the Nate one hurt. <laughs> I must say they, uh, uh, they didn't like that. He was definitely their top guy in that area. And but I think it's like any coach, you know, you, you battle in recruiting, it's just like you battle on the field and you're gonna win some and you're gonna lose some. There's some other kids down there that uh, a Nate, a Nick Vannon, who we were really excited about, decided to stay in, uh, at Western. So he, at those instances, you're never really sure um, and you just kind of move on. It, it's when the a student athlete makes that decision, that's their decision and you accept it and move forward. What did Nick Vannon say to you when he broke the news? I said he, that he really liked the whole experience and he loved the fact that, uh, you know, we're a new program, thinks we're going to be very successful. But the biggest thing for him was he just wanted to uh, uh, stay at home, play at home and, uh, and play for his hometown team. Okay, so Nate Bahar is the headliner, but you hope to have 70 guys here by September. And I know that's a smaller roster size by CIS standards, yeah. but at the same time, it's still 70 guys. Yeah. <laughs> so. Do you worry that you may not be able to give some of these guys the attention they need to best serve their development? Well, I think that was the reason we went with 70. Uh, there's one program right now in the CIS, uh, the Regina Rams, who have, uh, I think last year they carried 68 guys. And I talked to Frank McChrystal, their coach, and asked them, you know, the, the pluses and minuses of, of having a roster of that size, you know, compared to, you know, the, the high 90s to, to low 100s that you get in the OUA right now. And, and, I, and I thoroughly believe in what he said about this, that our guys are going to get coached. And that was the biggest thing. Our, our program is all about development. We need to take the guys that we're bringing in now, work with them. If the, if the majority of these guys are here with us for their fourth and five years of playing, we're going to be successful. And uh, we didn't want to bring in just a, a group of guys that uh, you know would be cut the next year or just sort of uh, thrown off to the side. We want to have the best guys that we can work with and develop. And if we do that, I think I like our chances. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we're now six months away from opening <laughs> kickoff. Do you feel the excitement growing on campus? Definitely. I, this is one of the most unique places I've ever been in terms of football, because there's no football here. But yet the excitement brewing around the, the fact that it's coming is it's almost better than it was at even at St. Mary's because it was just accepted that football was there all the time. But there's a real buzz in the air. You, you meet people in the uh, academic faculties, uh, very excited. You meet students on campus, very excited. And I, I just think it's a really unique experience. 
It's going to be a fantastic kickoff on September 7th. It's, uh, it falls under orientation. Uh, it's the kickoff to the season. It's a kickoff to the new school year. And uh, football is a very big driving force in school spirit, um, creating a, a real Ravens pride here. And, uh, yeah, you can start to sense that now. Okay, I have one more question for you. It took Laval four years to win their first Bannier Cup. How long is it going to take you guys? Oh, boy. Interesting. Uh, I had a conversation just this past week with Glenn, and we talked about this, and I asked him how he did it, because they started a bit different. In 95, they played an exhibition season, and then in 96 was their first year, and he goes, we won one game. He goes, I'm not sure if we even should have won it, but we won it. But, you know, what they end up doing was they kept that group together, and the success they had was in 99 and in their fourth year. Um, you know, I like to think that we're going to travel the same path, but it, it, there's so many factors that come into play. And, and I think the success of this program is going to be measured on a lot of things. It's going to be measured on uh, the support that we gain. And I think that comes down to um, our student athletes on campus and having good student athletes on campus. And I think people will want to come out and support. I think um, having academic success is going to be important. Um, obviously, winning games is important. And, um, you know, we'd like to, you know, be in the playoffs, be in contention early, uh, uh, develop a confidence within this program that, you know what, we can compete and we will compete. Great. Thanks again for doing this. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you.